Welcome back to episode four of Doom World. So last episode we got a bunch of recruits, well that's from the episode before, but we managed to get two of them to join. And unfortunately we also lost Owen, who was one of our starting colonists and he died to a, a drug overdose. In the future what we know is that we have the UAC health dispensers, which can cure basically the worst condition that your person has. So almost like a... Uh, mechanoid injection so they are pretty good that's going to come in super useful so mechanoid serum is what i'm looking at mechanite serum mechanite serum i believe is what it's called so that'll be quite useful we're also going to extend the power out along here so we can get some lights into the center of the dining room slash rec room that's going to keep people nice and happy as well we can only do those one at a time also once we get some components together we will need to start looking into getting some cooling in because at the moment the temperature is 37 degrees outside which is making people unhappy Taiko is about to have a mental break he's having a very bad time at the moment basically a bunch of his mates died so he's a little bit grumpy about that which is understandable Kornato seems to be getting over Owen quite quickly and has an extra bed in her room so we'll destroy that we'll leave her with the double because she seems quite happy I think that is almost everything that we needed to worry about at the start sorted what we would like to do this episode is try to get some smelting going so we can break this down and then also gives us a chance to break down some metal slag because we are getting a couple bits of that built up. So you get about 10 to 15 metal slag depending on your setting that you have set up. So I think at the moment we should probably get about 10 ideally. We are still playing at 500% fret scaling with losing is fun. Only changes to that is we have plus 10 for colonist mood because we are going to be fighting a load so obviously we don't want people going on constant mental breaks because this game allows you to fight quite a lot and it does but it does mess with people's moods super quickly unless they're psychopaths and have bloodlust we're getting a bunch more lighting in and what we will also do because we have the storeroom here and we need to keep it cold and owens in the sarcophagus so hopefully we can resurrect him a little bit later we're going to put a door in that should act like an airlock keeping the heat in for us so hopefully he doesn't spoil if he doesn't spoil then we can bring him back to life a little bit later on and we also just need to keep an eye out for a quest to get one and if we can that would be pretty ace for us alternatively there will be other traders that will sell them so if we go into the world map see what's around us at the moment so we never have a UAC up here who we should be able to trade with they might have one and then we also got Goffenhurst Chances of them having it is pretty low, but it might be worth a punt. So after the next raid comes in We are just going to equip someone up with as much goodies as they can They'll take all of the chem fuel all of the silver and that hopefully will be enough to get that sorted on component front we have 32 of them which means that we are going to get some cooling in this is just going to keep people a, a little bit happier would send Flo to do it straight away but she is asleep at the moment Vincent and Squint still seem to be having a bit of fun with each other so I don't need to worry about them breaking up anytime soon and because we have a bunch of marble what i think we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of a stone walkway behind the kill zone this won't do much but it will mean that we can move quicker on it and also means less chance of things catching fire so we got a little bit of plants around here if they catch fire then they're more likely to burn our colonists but if we got that should minimize that bit and still not too much is on the go Nutrient paste dispenser is doing its job quite well and we will need to look into getting more colonists that is going to be the most important thing for us get some more colonists then we need to get up to I think it's gas operation on the research which we're not too far away so scalable solar roofs into smithing into machining gunsmithing blowback operation then into gas operation and with that we are going to be able to get I think it's like the heavy heavy rifle it's from the uac mod and that thing is pretty mental once we get that we will be able to hold through most and then we'll start focusing down armor afterwards and then from armor we'll go into shield belts and that's probably about as far as head as we're going to plan because there's a pretty good chance that we'll get overrun before that 
So we've got scalable solar roofs and I want to see if that unlocks what we're after. So scalable solar roofs are there. So you can put them on top of the buildings. Then you put a, I forget what it's called. It should be down in MISC. Yeah, solar controller into the room. And then that will allow you to use the whole roof as a solar panel, which gets you a whole bunch of energies. Got a fox and we got Phoenix Owlcat fighting a fox. Cool. Meteorite Jade has come in. Ship to the stars, not a problem. Solar roofs were already covered. And Calaris's Max. Yeah, that sounds like a good trade. The Duchess of the Exodus Empire is making a request. A mechanoid swarm has been attacking a settlement. She wants you to signal the mechs and distract them while she clears the hive. If you do, a mechanoid cluster will land at ARC headquarters. The pod contains these dangers. One EMI dynamo, gloom lights, one high mech shield, four mini slugger turrets and three auto charge turrets. That is actually really good for us because that means we're going to be able to get some mechanoid components. And they don't really have too much there that is dangerous. A massive electromagnetic interference generator. It interferes with or shuts down electronical devices in the nearby regions. So we've got the three guards with shields and we should just be able to get them down, dead screen them so they can get in close. And if we basically just hit one of these big turrets, that chain reaction should go and then ideally trigger the other ones. And we should be able to get this done nice and quick. The mechanoids have arrived. Yet yeah, we noticed. Bit speed up a little bit just so everyone's in position. Then we're just gonna oon it across, get in and start picking a fight. So we can hit one of the mini little ones. Everything else seems pretty chilled. Finally got through the shields. Okay, that didn't blow up. Whilst that's happening, we'll get Flo and Vince to come round. Hit them. Okay, that's those two done. Take that. Squints on the other mini turret. A bit close for this one to shoot. Cool. And then we'll just get the three of them. Do that flank to sit down. Okay, speed that up a little bit. And retreat back. So this is what we're mainly after is the mechanoid components. This is how we are gonna build the mech tech later on, which is some pretty wicked stuff. We only got one component out of that, but that's not a big deal. 72 steel and 10 plus steel. So not the greatest haul we could have had, but still decent enough. Let's pri prioritize healing the components and everything else can pretty much stay there. It's not gonna rust away. Careful shoot energetic and pretty, so that's Cornetto's like traits. I was kind of hoping that she might have psychopath, but she doesn't seem too fast for being in there with all the dead bodies at the moment. And we'll need that to be dropped on the floor. It will just speed the process up by a crazy amount. But she might be heading to bed now, so we'll leave that be. And yeah, we really need to start getting through onto that. I think right now, we don't need to worry too much about an infestation. It'd be annoying, but these clothes are more getting in the way than a couple spiders are going to. And when the spiders show up, we can just basically butcher them. Well, the insects. So we butcher them down and that's a whole bunch of chem fuel. And realistically, if it happens in here, they can't destroy too much. And we do have a landed frigate come in. So, Digital Response Mech Hive Kilo sent a new ship to land on the planet. A small ship often a, a small ship often used for ground recon operations. It has minimal defences when destroyed mechanoid presence on the surface will be lowered. If it's left operational, it would contribute to the size of the mechanoid attack parties. Slightly increases mechanoid presence. So this mechanic you can actually abuse a little bit. 
So if you let a whole bunch of these mechanoid ships land, then you basically only get attacked by mechanoids. And if your defense is set up just to deal with mechanoids, mechanoids become super quick to deal with. And they also drop a whole bunch of goodies. And then when they land, sometimes they land with ships. And when those ships land, those ships drop those mechanoid components. So you can use that, it becomes quite useful. But once they upgrade, they can use cover and stuff. And then there's also this new type of mechanoids that show up. So they're like the old mechanoids, but they are just a little bit glossier and smoother looking. So I'm not sure if there's too much difference in stats. It doesn't seem it. But generally when you're in a situation where you can happily fend off mechanoids, it's because you've got some seriously heavy firepower. So even if the stats were a little bit different, it's not a big deal. But then we can find out because a normal mechanoid has, I think it's 33 sharp resist and 22 blunt resist, other than the centerpiece, which is like uh, 73 sharp resist and then 22 blunt resist. But once we get to it, we'll find out and then we can have a look at their stats. We'll put the electronic smelter in. And that's going to help us just break down all of this stuff in here. And we're also going to be able to then break down the metal slag. Which means we're going to get more steel. And then with more steel, we're obviously going to be able to do more stuff. And that all being said, I think we need to mine some more. So we'll take this corner section here out. It has got up to 41 degrees outside with a little bit of fog. But I think it was only... Teo or Teiko that had the problems but he seems to be in a better mood now still not in a great mood but yeah not the worst we've seen okay this basically goes straight to smelt appeal do forever drop on floor details and basically destroy anything that is tainted close unlimited space on that and do forever drop on floor this is for metal slag that doesn't need anything fancy we'll leave the weapons for the moment but we will put destroy weapons on this will be do forever and the details on that is we don't allow anything that is smeltable and anything that is above good quality because those will be worth selling canal is just there working through that We've already got a little bit of steel maybe we can get a second one in that would also be quite useful Cool, got the space for it and then we're going to need to get a bunch more wood with the wood we're going to be able to get some more storage that storage we're going to be able to put into here and we should be able to store eight things in the space of two which works out pretty pretty nicely so we go for the tool shelves because they can store more stuff so how many can we get in okay we can get in four which obviously four is better than none no storage space okay can't store steel we don't have enough space which makes sense because obviously everything's taken up by all of the tainted apparel which is one of the things you do need to watch out for when you're trying to use this so we're going to copy that put it into the next one as well so then that is both sets of components going so we are going to allow basically all apparel except we are not going to allow clean apparel then we're going to copy that and then we're going to paste it onto these which means there's going to be less travel time for anyone using the smelters and frees up a bunch of space but as you can see there is just so much stuff so as you can imagine once the rage start getting bigger you need a, a lot more space to be able to process through we do have rare thrombos coming in I'm not too sure if I want to hunt them just yet. And then we've also got a party. So as soon as everyone's having a party, we'll let them socialize, get the mood booth, have some people actually like each other in the end, and that'll be pretty good. And seem to be running low on power. So we'll chuck in two more batteries. And then we are going to put some solar in. I think we might use the roof of this for it, just as a little test. So it's going to cost 420 steel to do and then we're going to put the little solar controller in okay looks like we need to cancel a space of four to fit it in not a big deal a 
Cool. Done. Manhunter pack. Whole bunch of gazelles. Should have been paying attention. Reform the line here. And we'll go to normal speed. We'll put Teiko and Corneto inside because they are not going to put up much of a fight. And then we'll back ourselves into a corner so we can't get too surrounded. So at least one person's always going to be able to shoot this way. Okay, the gazelles cut us off. That's fun. So somehow the gazelles are better at surrounding me than I am of breaking out, which kind of makes sense. We'll take the other two as everyone's distracted, they can come in and offer a decent amount of firepower. We should draw a couple of the gazelles away. Not that we want the gazelles aggroing onto these guys because they've actually got no armour, but at least they'll get a little bit of shooting practice. Pull Vint to one side, move Flow down, and that is everything covered pretty quickly. Ignore back up to two times speed. So to say that went well would be a bit of a lie. I didn't think they would be there quite that quickly, and they were. No scars taken up on Vincent. Nothing taken up on Flo. Squint has a stab, st a stab scar on his right shoulder. Taiko has scars on his torso and left leg. And Cornetto has a stab scar to the head, but it's not affecting his stats. The one on Taiko is just a little bit. That is something that we can deal with. But speed up just a little bit so we can start processing through everything. And hopefully once we get a little bit of steel, that will be done up there. So we're going to have to mine a bunch more. And we've got this whole section here that can go, which is pretty tidy and turn this one into a dumping stockpile clear rule and then we'll just allow chunks and that'll be steel chunks for now door to door seller from the UAC which is actually perfect if we get attacked when these guys are around everything is going to get spanked alternatively they normally have some insanely good kit and they might have uh, the mechanoid resurrector serum Speed everything up, see where they decide to chill. Looks like they're going to come all the way around and come into the base, which is good. Smithing is researched, marriage is on, so Squint and Vincent are getting married. Cool. And then we've got door to door seller from the UAC, which we've already covered. Just realised we haven't been attacked yet, so that should mean within the next day or so there will be a, another raid coming in. And raids are good for us because we can smelt their stuff down, get new recruits, all of that fun stuff. And we also have a space battle happening at the moment, which is a really cool event. Several massive spaceships are engaged in combat in the planet's orbit. Missed shots and debris can impact the ground in the area. This can lead to massive fires. And also a whole load of new recruits. So we just got to keep an eye out for that. And there'll be a bunch of ship chunks will come down, which is always good fun. So what we got over here, we just got another dead person, just fell from this sky, dead, yeah, makes sense. <laughs> They're not Master Chief, they can't fall from orbit. And then we've also got the Treaty coming in, who's going to attack us in 12 hours. And from the looks of it, I imagine that they are going to be a tribal. So we need to keep an eye out for that space battle so we just don't get accidentally slotted. We are going to go trade with Honey and see if there's anything that we can pick up in the meantime. We're not freezing meat at the moment, so we might as well get as rid of as much of that as we can. That's more potatoes than we're using. Well, that's rice. More rice than we're using, so we'll sell 800 of that. We're going to try and shift as much chem fuel as they will take, which seems to be a decent amount. They have a bunch of components. So we'll take 10 of those, two advanced components, just because we can. Can't really afford to take their steel, their plasteel can't afford their health dispenser they do have a negotiator implant which is really good and representative implant but right now that's not going to be super useful for us sell all of this stuff off that we're not using and maybe if we're lucky they will have a good weapon for us so we get rid of the pump shotgun 
they do have a UAC shotgun, which is not great, has to be said. Get rid of the LMG, the assault rifle, super shotgun, still not something that we're crazy interested in. Survival rifles, we need to get rid of anyway. And let's have a look at the heavy cannon. Okay, pretty beast, 70 damage, stocking power of five, armor penetration 40%, burst count three, decent cooldown, and warm up isn't too much. Slows you down a little bit, but that thing is just gonna shred. So it's basically like this, but with not as much of a cooldown. So we're gonna take two of those for now. I would love to get some shield belts, but we cannot afford them at all. But armor is going to be super important for us. UAC security helmet. Yes, please. That thing is a beast and it's cheap. So we've got two of those coming in. And hopefully if I can scrimp some more money together, we might be able to get the UAC Marine armor as well. Which again has really good stats. This stuff is just to try to keep our guys alive. Anything I can afford to sell off. You can have the hay, you can have the survival meals. I'll sell some more rice, not that I think it's going to make a massive difference. The medicine, we cannot afford to sell. Glitter world, we can't afford to sell. The health dispensers, we kind of need. We can sell off pretty much all of the wood. Actually, we'll just sell it all off. Yeah, I think that's the best we're getting. So we've got one extra marine armor, two helmets and two more guns and we got rid of a whole bunch of junk in our base yeah we are looking like we are in a good situation so Taiko you can have the helmet you can have the gun you can have the armor Cornetto you can have the helmet and you can have the gun right 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 and with Ooh, that was lucky we just had a crash straight into the prison thankfully nobody's too injured we have lost a bed but we'll have that remade pretty quick roy's what are you like staggeringly ugly incompetent cook kind sleeper efficient and heat intolerant who can't fight so yeah you are not on our list slowpoke and ascetic can't fight yeah not much use to me we got kitten Cold intolerant, good hygiene, fast learner, slothful, jealous and hardy. Good with plants, not much else. No, not useful. Not useful at all. And just seems like it's in this top corner up here. So there is a chance it might go and crack open ye old ancient danger. And we're just going to have a look down here. If these guys stay long enough, we might be able to break some more stuff down. We break some more stuff down, we can sell it. So we got Sleeper has just crashed in as well. Lazy, Pyromaniac, Jogger, Kind. Who's a slow learner. Yeah, no, we don't need you. Rusty has just dropped in. Temperature tolerant, neurotic, gay, unconvincing, nimble and craven. So craven isn't great. Neurotic isn't great. So that's a higher mental break threshold. And Craven is a higher mental break threshold as well. So between those two, that is going to be a slight problem there. Pete has crashed in as well. Undergrounder, transhumanist, fast learner and resilient. Go and... What faction are you part of? Independent refugee. Now we could either capture Peter, which means he's a guaranteed recruit, just might take a bit more time or we can rescue him. Since as we want him, what we are going to do is we'll just capture him. We don't have enough space in the prison, so we're going to put in two more sleeping spots. We send Squint out, capture Peter, and then that will be good for us. All of these we can break down into components just like standard ship chunks, which is really good. Bell's dropped in as well. Brawler and Ugly, not a massive fan of brawlers in this, well, for the setup we're going, they normally just get absolutely mangled. We also have new lovers, which is Wombat and Kero. So that is two of the prisoners, which hopefully will mean that if we can get one of them, the other will join quicker. Not that it inherently works that way, but it kind of does. 
if that makes sense. So it doesn't actually affect anything, but it just makes it easier because they're interacting with people that they like, so therefore they're in a better mood. As long as they're set to Warden. We'll get the extra lights in because we haven't finished that yet. And when Cornetto's back up, Cornetto will go in and finish off breaking some stuff down. But yeah, so what's that? It's 11 ship chunks. If they all give us three, so that's 33 more components. Which is going to be pretty nice. Okay, new levers we've covered. Brawling Frenzy Flow, Inspired Cooking under Vincent. So that's cool. Temperature in here is still holding pretty cold, which is what we need. And the tribes people from the treaty have shown up. And it looks like they're sappers. And sappers just going straight into the UAC. They are going to have a bad, bad time. We'll just create a gun line so we can just splatter anyone that tries to come in. We also have a crop sprout over yonder somewhere. Cool, so a bunch of funky mushrooms. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. That is not happening. So once they're in... None of the UAC went down and that's all of those tribals got absolutely slaughtered. Everyone back to work. And then what we do is we just allow all of this. Monica, what are you like? Careful shooter, restless, greedy, stiff and kind. Yeah, no. Undergrounder, bloodlust and feeble with good shooting, decent construction, decent mining. Right, you are ours as well. And what about you, White? What you got? Depressive iron world, energetic, frail and ascetic. No. Gwinnetto's going down to go do her work. And hopefully we can get one more trade-off before those UAC go away. Like I keep saying, if we can get that in, we are going to be in a pretty sweet situation because we're not really going to have another chance to be able to pick up this decent kit. Those two rifles are a huge find. Do you know what? We're going to go for it. If we have the armor, they're less likely to get hurt. If they're less likely to get hurt, then we're less likely to need those medical supplies. So we are going to sell two of those off. And a bunch of hay. Wood is fine. You can have these rubbishy weapons. You can have the heavy SMG. We'll keep the plasma cannon, because we're not going to have another chance at it. You can have the AMR, you can have the modular rifle, you can have the cloth tribal wear. And the rest of that, and the pop smoke belt. And the smoke pop belts. And we are going to take that marine armor. Can we afford two? Yes, we can. So that means someone, next person we get, is going to have some decent esque kit. Nothing great, but something. Well, actually, that all being said, did we buy all of the heavy rifles? Yeah, I think we did. Right, that will do. Cornetto, get in your armour. Crop Sprout, Wild Man Wandering. To be fair, we'd have to capture the Wild Man and all of that fun stuff and then basically tame them. We are not in a situation where we can do that right now. So, not too fussed about that. Also looks like we might need some more rice. Funny that. That's kind of what happens when you sell everything. And then solar area is 84 on the roof. So the power output is 2,500 watts, which is actually half decent. So that is... Similar to a wind turbine going at full power. And I think that is going to be a good place to end the episode. We've had a raid, we've got a whole bunch of supplies, we've had a space battle, and our prison is now full, and we have solar power. 